Greetings from a very, very cold Kansas City. This is Renee Benson at AV Renee KC. You are listening to and watching The AV Life. Happy Thursday. This is Nancy Blanchard with Williams AV. And you can reach me at, at Nancy Blanchard. And you are listening to and watching The AV Life. Hello, everyone. This is Murphy Daly coming to you from Southern California. You can find me at Written by Murphy on all the places. And I am so happy you're joining us for the AV Life. And I'm your host, uh, Tim Van Wert, uh, and I am sitting here in a dropping temperature in New Jersey, and you are watching and listening to the AV Life. So yeah, we are back for another week. Um, hey, Renee, I'm going to first come out and say congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a, uh, a well done, a well done game. Um, I will, I will say we, we kept it at least interesting for. Yes, you did. For one quarter. <laughs> you know what? I was really nervous about it. And then I thought, no, this is just what we do. We like to make us very nervous and come back. <laughs> and then I thought, I don't know if I should tease Tim or not. Cause that's either not <laughs> nice or just what you do in sports. So thanks for being a good sport. And man. You guys did have a heck of a showing though at Arrowhead. I would say that. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, and and you for were no just kidding. being there, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Y'all were just there, right? Like just a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. So to have- And you, and you handled us then too, but yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't like to speak out of turn because a lot of friends of mine are talking about Super Bowl. I go, no, 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 no. We talk about this game and nothing else, right? That's it. And so- yeah, there's a there's a Can't long road proud. ahead. There's still a long road ahead, and it's the playoffs, and anything can happen. So it's and, and are you going to be a Buffalo fan this week or a Chiefs fan? <laughs> oh, I I I don't know. I, uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be a Chief, I'm going to be a Chiefs fan. I think. Thank for this you, week Tim. I like I like the Mahomes. I like the Mahomes energy. You know, it's yeah. yep. You know, so I, I think that's what it yep. is. I think I'll. I'll <laughs> I'll cheer on uh, KC for, for here on uh, for now, at least we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens okay. as things go further along. I am rooting for the Niners though, because a buddy of mine is a Niners fan and I got friends who are Niners fans. So I'm, I'm rooting for the Niners uh, on the other side. So we'll see. We'll see okay. how it goes. Well, as long as we got that, that's fine. All right. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> uh, no problem. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I just wanted to, to put, put that out there and you know happy retirement to ben roethlisberger uh now that uh yeah, i know i know it was probably not the way he wanted to go out but you know the jaguars had to win and that raiders game had to finally come to an ending so well i mean and at what age is he 38 or 39 at what age do we go man really? we've had a hell of a life it's time to hang it up right well you should I ask mean, tom brady that question because i think it's time to the get that done with as well you know yeah i'm good with that, that too hey i'm on yeah. board with that too well and and you know ben is the ben is the last of that uh that class so it's you know so it's i think it's time you know he's he's done it he's he's got nothing else to prove he's got the super bowl titles he's got the the, the rankings he's got the and he's got the big ben stats status like that's he's a special quarterback that doesn't exist anymore that his, his stature as a quarterback just doesn't exist like that's not something anybody does anymore so it's, it's kind of like our refrigerators and our dryers <laughs> we just don't make them like they used to mm -hmm. you know we've talked about that before yes exactly so all right well let's we're going to switch off of football because i feel like we're leaving nancy and murphy out of this as well <laughs> yeah. um so i'm sorry for that i i <laughs> Actually, let me tell you, my husband um, was tracking the, and, and I was with him a bit watching the football games again. And uh, he loves watching football games when they happen somewhere really cold. Oh. Being mm. a, a permanently Southern California guy, he's like, oh, I really want to see them be cold. I want to see their breath blow. And he's like, he watched like a ton of football this weekend. So I'm like, well, how did he should go? probably watch the Chiefs game this weekend in Kansas yeah. City. <laughs> or yeah. currently it's like i think 11 that's that's, I mean, I don't at know. the end i'm like so is, how are the chiefs doing for for you he's like they're in it mm -hmm. 
Well, and I think there's always uh, Lambeau as well. Like if you're if you want a cold football game, you go to you go to Wisconsin and you you go to Lambeau and go see Green Bay, and that's so there's everyone's got to go through Green Bay. So it's gonna be that's gonna be interesting as the weeks go on. Well, I was reading an article today that said, "What's the possibility of them, you know, delaying games because of it being way too cold?" And then they said, "Here's you know what the players do to try to keep warm." I mean, it'd have to be pretty cold, especially us playing Buffalo, right? It'd have to be pretty cold for them to do anything about that. But right, yeah, I don't think I don't. Well, I know the concern was when they had the Super Bowl here in New Jersey. New, I'm going to say New Jersey because it's here in New Jersey. I don't give a crap that they call them the New York football teams. But anyway, um, when they had the Super Bowl here, they were that was a concern. Was that could it snow? Could it be too cold? Like, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, but that's, I feel like that's one of the things about football is that you play it outside, you play it in whatever weather it is, like in the rain and the snow, you know, maybe you don't play it in a lightning storm, but you know, you don't play any sports in lightning storms. So, <laughs> so yeah. Well, and with I, the I, technology I and we have the, you know, the heaters under the fields, so mm -hmm. like if there's ice or snow or whatever, you'll see it melting on the TV. Well, mm -hmm. that helps the guys too. So it may be really nasty outside, but it might be penetrating some heat from the low. And we have that at our field. So Good floor. I mean, mm -hmm. anyway, it's kind of like defrost on your car on the field. You'll see it up the lines <laughs> yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. So. Murphy, right. you better well, get us off of the football minute. I know, okay. yeah. Get us on the okay. PM, minute. <laughs> PM minute, yeah. So, um, mm, you know, things come at you. Things come at you all the time. Uh, Renee, you're struggling. These football teams are struggling. I certainly struggle a lot. You just never know what's going to come up uh, within a project and within the rest of you know, life that's happening and we're all human beings and it surrounds us. And um, in order to, uh, in order to deal with all of the extra of life, I have to rely on my systems. I think I've mentioned this before, but the systems have to be there. If I wake up like this morning, I had to wake up really early and I was groggy. Uh, and um, like, okay, I need my systems. I gotta have my folders. I gotta have my usual things. And so, creating a system that I can I can lean on, like a like a a crutch, <laughs> will save. So that's the PM minute. Get the systems. Get them the ones that you know that you don't even have to think about. And the systems will carry me through when life is throwing everything at me. Very cool. Yeah, I like that. It actually reminds me of a, a movie, um, Facing the Giants, it was called. It was like, oh, it, well, speaking of football, I'm sorry, I'm bringing it back to football. Oh, we are. <laughs> I, I'm not, hey, but I'm not making it Star Wars this time. So it's, it's, that was fun. <laughs> all right. I'm trying to think of how, uh, I don't know. I'll think about that. I'll, maybe I'll come to me. But anyway, Facing the Giants, um, it, it's, it's one of those like religious feel good movies, but one of those i think wait was it this movie tim oh, you're going now, <laughs> now i'm now i'm cro i might be crossing i might be crossing my movies you know what Nathan, but anyway it was a football anyway, it was just a go with it it was a football movie we'll just go with that yeah. and uh, they were coming up with they had this one play that they were trying to run and they kept practicing it in football and practicing it and practicing it and practicing it and going over and over and over it again and the coach was like it's like this is the play we're going to run when you're tired this is the play that we're going to run it wasn't football at all. It was awesome. <laughs> it was semi-pro with Will Ferrell, <laughs> and it was uh, Woody Harrelson with the character. And they were like, "This is the play we're going to run. We're going to keep running it. We're going to keep running it because it's going. There's going to be a point in the game where you're going to be so tired or you're going to be so worn out. It's like this is the play we're going to run because it's going to be instinct for you to do it. Mm. And they were like, that was and that was the play, like the system that they had that no matter what, no, it could be in the fourth quarter at the very end and you are done and worn out. That is what 
it uh, that's the play they ran. And because they just knew what to do, it carried them through. Yep. So sorry, it took me a long time to get back to get around <laughs> okay. to that because no, I, it was good. That was good. <laughs> so as long as I get the right sport, that, apparently that's, that's what I went from. I went because the other the other movie that went through my head was Varsity Blues. And I was like, it's like, it's either a feel good Christian movie, a raunchy teenage football movie or a comedy basketball movie. So it was like, all right, I've like covered the entire gamut of <laughs> what it possibly could okay, be. Okay, so we may or may not be watching football this weekend. A lot of us will clearly, but some of us need to be watching feel good, romantic, um, Christian comedy. <laughs> Okay, well, not during the Chiefs Bills game, but oh, okay. No, right. not a no football. Okay. Football takes precedent uh, this weekend. So, and, and everybody who's listening, even when you feel like crap, you can lay on the couch and watch the TV and make yep. your husband bring you food to the couch. Mm. I mean, just go. saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, that's that's why we have systems in place. That's why everybody has systems in place. Is that that it also makes for easy training. It's like, here, here's the procedure. Here's what you do. Like you can pass along that information if you have a system. So there's, there's so many benefits to it. And I, yes, I think that's a great point there, Murphy. Thank you very much. Yep. I'll bring it back to being serious a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Nancy ran away. Oh, I was like, Nancy ran away. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> My electric no. blanket isn't isn't on, and it's like, oh, it's a little chilly. And then I, <laughs> oh my god, the plug wasn't. How building. cold is it there? <laughs> <laughs> well, my house is always cold versus outside. So today was low sixties. Oh, oh girl, oh my freezing. god! I, so I've been using my hold, electric. Hold on, blanket. let me hit mute again. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, I'm dying, dying, dying to get your feedback and your information on CES because kind of like Tim when when he was at Infocom, like you have to live vicariously through the people right. who go to things. Yeah. Well, it was um, yeah, that was my first time. And some said, you know, you you're really missing out a lot of what it it it, it all is. But you know what? It was good. It was good enough because I didn't realize all of the different products and how many countries were there so there's a variety of different halls and here's the thing i just had my foot surgery right so oh, no. i hadn't been walking and so i was trying to walk as slow as i could rest a little bit um but it was neat i i'd have to say the same as tim albright said is that the eureka hall that's where all the startups are that's what's cool because they have them uh, branched out into different countries so that you get to see all the vendors from France. So what oh, I was told is that the government, you have to apply, I think it is, and then the government will sponsor you. You're obviously responsible for your airfare and, and that, but as for the, the, the booth, you have a little like tabletop booth and um, you know, you just walk up and down the aisles to see what everybody has. And it's not that their products are out there yet, but there's a lot of concepts. So it ranges in everything from wellness to AI to ro robots to, you know, everything and anything, I guess you could say. So, fun. so that, that, that was neat. Um, you know what? It was mind blowing to walk into the hall where it would be more of us AV folks and Panasonic who was supposed to be there absolutely nothing and so what they had was like i saw that picture wooden type of boxes like you could sit on it but it had it had um qr codes on it wow. and then what they did was that you know there were some white couches so people were just sitting down in an empty space and um and then with which was a little disappointing with samsung is they blocked off so you couldn't walk in to see the technology. What you had to do, and there was long lines, is stand in line. When it was your turn, you go up to a kiosk, you enter in, scan your badge, and then you would be able to enter. And, and I didn't, I wasn't wasting my time. So I don't know if you were like, like Disneyland, where it's a certain number, you know, like you're in the queue, and then you return back at a certain time. So that, 
That was disappointing. Fast pass. Um, pardon? Fast pass. Yeah. Well, fast and pass. it's kind of amazing, kind of the the lengths. That, <clears throat> excuse me, the lengths that we're going to go through to have these kind of shows like Panasonic. I saw a picture yeah. and it looked, it looked like their booth was fairly significant and it was a lot of people sitting and I'm thinking, so you still paid your dues to be there. Right. And you still paid people to be there and you still gave people information, but that's not what they're there to see. <clears throat> right. They're there to see the next. Right. Oh they're, there, God, they're there, as David Danto said, is to be able to hold the product, even if it's just a concept, but to be able to see it and, you know, like a lot of the companies, Harman would do that too, is demo it, but, you know, it's going to be at least a year or so down the road before it actually comes to fruition. Uh, hall's very empty. That, that was, it, you know, you think about, it would have been better if they would have put everything in one hall. Because here you're having to walk, and I mean, it's distances to all the different halls. Sometimes you even take an Uber. But the fact that when you walked in and either the booths were spread out, so you're walking and there's these great big gaps of nothing, and then Wait, all of a sudden so there's like the, This is like what they're doing in the supermarkets now, where they're kind of like trying to make it look full. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and or then, maybe, I mean, at a show setting, it might be like, hey, we're trying to get you know, a few people here and a few people there and get them spread out so that, the, I mean, I don't, I don't, you know I don't know. Nobody asked my advice. I'm just saying, yeah. it's, you know, it, and it's kind of like, do you, do you knock them for not having product, but having space or do you go, Hey, thank you for being there. Like it's so, it's so, um, you know, new era. This is the new normal for us, right? Like yeah. do you go to a show and have people you can talk to six feet there or six feet there? And we can talk to you about the product or do you have people that go, we're not going and you can call us and we'll give you a demo online about the product. You know, it's like, what do you do? You know? Right. And then what wasn't unfair or didn't seem fair anyways, is to those smaller companies who have a booth well, where they were spread out because of the way the traffic was, you know, they weren't getting any attention. So their people are standing around for the whole time, just fiddling on their iPhones, you know, if, if there were, uh, you know, a coworker, they were talking to them. So that would be interesting to find out is really how, what was the effect to them as a company who paid the money, flew the people there when really they weren't seeing the traffic because everybody was kind of just more or less going to the bigger names and things. Mm. So, and then um, Sony well, you know, they didn't have any of their AV products. What they mostly were focusing on is this new car that they have, which, you know, is competing with uh, obviously Tesla and whomever else is out there or, or going to produce one. So it wasn't, it wasn't the Sony that we know that we would usually go and see, you know, what their latest products are. So, it was, but, it's, it, but it's CES. So that, I mean, that kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like kind of there to show, but, but it was the pavilion of where it, what I was told was more for us. That's in the AV industry. Oh, okay. But, but they had, they were showing Sony's car there. Hmm. Well, maybe so, that's what, what we're going to be Infocom doing in the had, AV industry. Maybe we're going to start doing cars. <laughs> well, that's Infocom, yeah. at Infocom Ford was there. And I think, I think Dodge was there as well, but, but it was, and they had their electric vehicles as well, they, oh. but they were pitching, they were pitching it more as a here, here's how you get your stuff around. Cause it was the big like transit trucks, like as those. Oh. So that's, but at the same time, it's like, you know, there, there is a, I guess there is a market there at some, to some extent. It's interesting that Sony was doing that, but you know, but excuse me at CES, there's a broader spectrum of people that you're going to try to, to hit. So um so the, the the plus is is that the halls like walking in between and out outside of the hall wasn't busy so it was just easy easy to walk through security mask all the time everybody was wearing a mask so i have to say for C ces is that they had the safe protocols in place and were enforced the streets of vegas it was like a ghost town i had never seen vegas like that before so I was, I was surprised. Um, it was great uh, when I had arrived is that I met with um, Tim Albright, David Danto, and then Daily Do. 
-hmm. So had had uh, dinner with them. You know, of course, everybody sat, um, you know, socially distanced. But it was just nice to meet them. And I'm I met Patty, and then also uh, Paul Harris another night. And you know what? So how how did Daly get over? Did he just had to have a negative COVID test to get back to the U.S. or what? Did he have to do anything special um, to get in from the? Because he's in the UK, right? Yeah, he's, he's in the UK. So I think you have to have he, a test. But I think so. He was. I he think was, that England changed where you don't have to out of the U.S. have a test. I think they have to test in England. I mean, everything's mm. changed so. when he goes back. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Right. So. Yeah, I was just he was probably the only one that I saw that was there that I thought was international of people that I knew, you know, right. just people yeah. that I knew. So I was kind of impressed with that. I'm like, OK, well, if we can get one there, then maybe the next show, yeah. which Infocom, well, we've got um, several before then. But if Infocom comes in in June in Vegas, maybe we can get. Yeah, more international people, it, maybe. Yeah. And and it I was so nice because of pardon. I think that's going to happen because already um, I think that um, Omicron is a game changer and mm. um, the changes in uh, the UK that happened like what yesterday, where they're like, you know, you guys make up your own minds about masking and, and we're going to trust you to do whatever. So I think that that is the beginning and more will spread. Right. Yeah. But it's probably like with you, Tim, you know, with Infocom, it was just so nice to finally meet people in person instead of yeah. always talking on Twitter. Right, exactly. That's, that's how I felt when I met like Tim Albright and I met James, like it was like, you know, and, and Aaron and like, like all these wonderful people, you know, it's like, and, and like and the entire crew from USC. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah was that, that was just, it, yeah, just to have that again after at that point, you know, 18 months of right. isolation, exactly. isolation for lack of a better word, you yeah. know, it, well, and now I feel like, like a lot of us, maybe not all of you all, but a lot of us are back in that kind of, I mean, everybody I know has had it. I'm sitting here waiting for my results. Like everybody is back into kind of that isolation mode events I had in January have all been canceled. Um, so I'm like, oh my God, here we go again. But then it's like, hopefully we get through that so that when I go to, I have an, a, a pretty big event in March, April, and then June, I'm like, please, dear Lord, let us get to the point where I can see my people <laughs> because it's so, yeah. it's so crazy. But, um, you know, even little at a time, I know it's really monetarily heavy and it's hard on people, but I'm like, I mean, we need to slowly one at a time get back. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully, hopefully well we can get there. I was, I was to next week, I have meetings um, with a couple of consultants in Dallas and they, they said, are you going to come to the office? And I said, no, not with how high Omicron is here. Mm -hmm. And then, and then to go there, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate because some people are traveling, but I just can't take that chance. Well, yeah. I was, and I had the green light and now everything has stopped again. And then um, I don't know, I'm sure most people are familiar with Troxel and Tierney they merged and they were going to have a huge event this week. Like I should be there right now. I mean, huge event, completely canceled, no rescheduling. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of a bummer, but. Um, well, one, one thing I'll, I'll tell you out of CES, even though, you know, it was CES did a phenomenal job, as I said, with the safety protocols, uh, I did read that there was from one company, Korean company, nine employees tested positive for COVID. And wow. they had to make, the company had to make special arrangements by plane or hotel or something like that for them because they had tested. And they said that a, a couple others. So you know what, I guess it's that still, who knows? Like, is it going out and having dinner and somehow, you know, it, just Omicron spreads quicker. But so yeah. and that's still the thing is some casualties. Yeah. And that's the thing with Omicron right now is that we're we're, oh, we're dealing with it. Whoa. <laughs> we're dealing we're dealing with it right now. And it's it's like wildfire. It's just it's easy to it's easy to spread. Easy, it's quick, uh, it's very contagious. Not as well, I've heard, generally speaking, Renee, you know, I, I've heard that it's generally not as 
intense as some of the other ones. I mean, I, yeah. I know obviously it varies from person to person. I'll um, let you know in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like live results coming in right now. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so I think this at uh, the, the beginning of the end, I guess you could say it is, you know, like I think. Although once I, we get, I did hear that this was going to be it, right? Omicron was going to kind of be it. Well, that's what I think. I think this is this is the 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 last piece of what it's going to be to put us back. Re, the the big reset button, for lack of a better, you know, control at the yeah. lead. Let's let's get this back to to normal. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, so like, and for from my from a personal standpoint, like that that's great. Like here in New Jersey, like I've I've got tickets. I just bought tickets for uh, the Harlem Globetrotters uh, at, at in the middle of at the end of February. I've got tickets to go see imagine dragons which is like my first concert in two years which i am wow. so happy about yeah i know um and uh you know we're and we're taking our son with us too like you know my wife and i are taking our son for his first concert he loves them like he's seven years old and he loves imagine dragons oh you my know God, it's my like, best friend would love him yeah yeah <laughs> So he, uh, so we're excited, excited to be able to take him to that. You know, we're all vaccinated. He's vaccinated now too, and he'll still be vaccinated when we go to the show. Um, so, you know, it's getting to the point where now we just kind of need to, I think we just need, need to get to back live. to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, va and, and vaccinated or not, and you're, you're, if you're vaccinated or not, you're going to get this, right? They said like a hundred percent of the people are going to get this. The good right. news is, it's like it's several days of just what I'm doing right here in front of you all. You're welcome with for the baggy eyes and all that. Um, it's going to be a, if you go to that concert, and enjoy it. You guys are making memories as a family. If somebody gets sick out of it, you're all vaccinated. You're going to be sick for a couple of days and you're going to be fine. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be fine. But so, is it, do you have to, if you find, do you have to isolate for 10 days though? No, no, that's, no if, everything's you, down now. Yeah. No, if you're vaccinated and boosted, there is zero quarantine. Now you could do it out of your own goodness of your heart, but if you're vaccinated and not boosted, it's five day quarantine. If but you're then, not vaccinated and nothing, then they say seven to 10 days. Oh, so I had heard that, uh, like you said, five days, but if you still have symptoms, then you have to do 10 days. No, not if you're boosted or, um, if you're boosted and vaccinated, that's not the case. I mean, I'm in a hospital right now. I can give you my paperwork. It's um, it's that's not the case anymore. If you're boosted, vaccinated, there literally is no quarantine period. If you're just vaccinated and didn't get the boost, then it's five days. It doesn't matter it doesn't on where you are. And I think it's, California is different. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure California is. This yeah. is a CDC state of Missouri. Right. Schools, work, that sort of thing. Right. Which I work from home, so I don't really care. I just need to know, do I need to order my groceries online or can I go to the store and get them? So, mm. you know, and I need to get on a plane Monday. So I need to have my results. And if I can't get on the plane Monday, then I need to know. Right. But, you know. And, you know, if here here in Jersey, the, the governor came out today and he's anticipating ending the mask mandate for schools by June. So, you know, we could be by the time May, June rolls around, we could be no masks in the schools, which that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. You know, I mean, within reason, like if, it, if it's if it's appropriate for us to do that, that yes, I am all in favor for that. You know, if it means we have to finish out this last school day, the school year, then that's what we have to do. You know, but. Yeah, I'm not um, whatever there there are people with degrees way higher than i have that are making right. these decisions so um i kind of well, we I, I, and you kind of just you know you're a parent you kind of mm -hmm. just got to trust your instinct you know if your kid is sick or i'm sick or your parents are sick and you can school from home for a few days then just freaking do it you know just do mm -hmm. it no matter what but i mean i also think that sending the kids back to school with no masks and a couple get sick we're just helping fight the virus. We're going to help fight it by all getting immune to it. I don't know. Yeah. Go out in there and keep on living, you know, so. Go to that concert. Take your kid at the concert. Yep. If you get sick, stay at home a couple of days, and then you're going to be fine. 
And mm-hmm. next year we're going to treat this like a, like a flu. Uh, and that's just my opinion. Bold predictions. Everybody be mad. Send the hate mail now. I'm just, re- I'm just ready. To, I, you know, I'm just ready to get over it. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that though, Renee. I agree. Like we're, we're at that point now that we have treatments, we have vaccinations, you know, we know, we know what to expect. More. Yeah. So like, yes, I think at this point that, you know, yeah. All right. It's, it's COVID season. Let's go get our shots and let, you know, we go get our shots we deal with the C if we get it, we get it. We stay home just like we do with the flu and let's, you know, let's, and you're going to have those people that are like, they are now when they get sick, they still come to work and it's just a way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's, work. Un- that's, that's a- unfortunate, but yeah. that's still going to happen. I mean, that's it still going to happen. It happened Actually, 20 years ago with just the flu. You know what I mean? Right. That's it's, it's just what it is. Actually, but yeah. I think what might happen is because of this, people might do the work from home when they're sick more. You know, there mm-hmm. might be more of that, that people will be more aware. That would be better. Yeah. And, and less kids are- will be like, oh, hey, I need to be a, a sick day today, mom or dad. Oh, no, here's your sick day. Here's your login information. <laughs> yeah. Your Google Classroom is ready for you. Go ahead. So, but this is an opportunity, though, that for the school districts that have not invested in technology, because I'm going to bring this back around to, to AV invest in the cameras make it easy for the teachers to be able to just have it available to them to walk into a classroom and be ready to teach one way or the other because you don't want to have a kid you know miss out on three days of school just because they need to isolate because of flu or covid tim that's what's happening right now with my son's high school and parents are saying why can we not also have the distance learning so that with them having to be home you know, they can continue with, with their studies. And that's a big thing because right now it's just in classroom, but there's a lot of kids out with COVID. Yeah, there's a lot. It's the same here. Yeah. Well, I watched oh, past, uh, my, my kid's old elementary school today and they were all out there playing, but they all had masks on. There wasn't mm-hmm. the... The social distancing so i was wondering how you know how they're handling that in the lower grades i mean do they get like so with my son he has to wear the mask when he's inside the school they have mask breaks outside even in this cold weather they'll go out for a little bit they you know they put their jackets on the gloves hats you know and then they go outside for a little bit get some fresh air and you know and on the nicer days they get a choice of either staying inside for lunch or going outside so um it's kind of they're just making yeah you know accommodations as it's appropriate so and that's as a parent that's all i can ask for you know? hey guys i'm so sorry to jump off but they called my name i'll okay. send you all a text yep. good luck i'm just i'm just gonna be at home either way so i'll let okay. you know but um right. sorry to jump off guys and love you okay. all take care renee love you too renee bye bye so so yeah, so Omicron sucks right now. Stupid Omicron, but we're gonna we're gonna get through it. And uh, I'm I'm very positive about uh, about that. Well, we I'm just positive start... about. Oh, sorry. No, okay. I was gonna say oh, I'm just I... positive about a lot of things. So <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? We, we just have to standardize, and that's not just the U.S., but it's all the countries. We need to come up with one unified regulation because um, it's just crazy how everybody and anybody has different ones. So what do you do? Like, I mean, I'm still, Tim, trying to figure out, am I still going to go full steam ahead with the European cruise in June with Disney? Right. Mm -hmm. Because here's a good point. Okay, let's say that somebody unfortunately gets it. Does that mean you have to pay extra for hotel because they'll have to isolate? Because that's according to that country. Right. It's and that's it makes the, the what they call them excursions when you get off the ship. It makes that stuff very difficult to manage. Because, you know, from island to island, especially if like you're not, I'm sure it's different from every Caribbean island to a, every Caribbean island. So, well, for Caribbean now, the, a lot of the, the spots aren't letting the passengers off. I was reading a blog from Disney Cruise of ones that had just gone on and um, they were saying that there were days where they were at sea because St. Thomas, they couldn't stop at. Hmm. 
Well, that's yeah, and that's that's you know, I, I've I've heard from other people that are trying to plan cruises. It's the same thing. And now actually, they're back to that. Are we even going to have the cruise? Because there was the one that got turned around. I think I just read like one cruise got turned back around, but then they had to isolate because of COVID before they unloaded. Every, I was uh, I'm like. <laughs> It's such cruises are such a a difficult situation. Like I don't, I don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I I don't uh, admire any of those people right now that need to make those decisions about having cruises and running cruises because envy them. You mean envy, 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 sorry, wrong word. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't envy any of them because that's, I I wouldn't want to be the one making that decision, you know, it's like, oh, we're gonna cancel the screws because numbers are too high. And it's, then well, you gotta refund. You think well, you're, you. you're booking these a year in advance. So you're thinking, which you know the pandemic has now shown us is that you can't plan ahead as per se, it's the same with trade shows. We all thought that in the fall, finally Infocom was gonna happen. And then sure enough, look, the numbers weren't going down. There were an increase. So ISC now is postponed. Yeah, I know. Yeah, with ISC being postponed and, you know, it's just, and like, I haven't really heard of any other events so far, but, you know, people are questioned, like Rutgers, like some events aren't happening right now. They're, like during winter break, like there were no events, like they, we went remote for the first two weeks of the semester. So we're finishing out week one of online uh, instruction. Now we're planning on coming back on the 31st. So uh, so it's we're gonna just have to keep moving forward is what it boils down to so but then uh, all right so real quick while we're at tour because we're getting towards uh we're hitting almost hitting our 45 minute mark uh yeah so uh real quick nancy and speaking of disney how about this craziness with this uh figment uh popcorn bucket yeah i don't know that character so oh. I, didn't, I didn't know what the whole craze was so figment for for those who may not be disney oriented or uh, just to clear uh, clear it up for nancy so there's the journey into imagination ride in epcot uh, so you go in the main entrance of epcot you hang a right and you go off that way there's the journey into imagination figment it's a figment of imagination okay so it is this purple pink dragon looking creature and he sings a really catchy song and Okay. they have created disney likes to release these popcorn buckets as yeah. the the seasons yeah. go on like i got we have a really cool uh mickey mouse uh christmas one from a couple of years ago yeah. uh we have you know and there's but this year this figment pit popcorn bucket has qu- created quite a stir like to the point where people are waiting in line for six hours to get this bucket I thought the Starbucks 50th anniversary mug was the big thing, but this has gone beyond that. Yeah. Um, I saw one lady who offered someone in line a hundred bucks. Yeah. Like if you're towards the front of the line, they're offering, um, yeah, they're offering big money just for this plastic bucket with a strap <laughs> yeah. for popcorn. See, we've done, because of California, we've done Disneyland. But as for those, oh, yeah, I have them all throughout the house. My son, all the Mickey Mouse ones, even even the uh, uh, popcorn buckets for um, Halloween. So we've got Mm -hmm. a couple of Mickey Mouse where he's dressed in a ghost and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's if you're really into it, my son is really into Mickey Mouse. Then, yeah, it's it's sort of like an obsession that you have to have it. Yeah. So I, I, I get it a little bit. But at the same time, it's like, wow, that's. Yeah, yeah, I got friends that are supposed crazy, to crazy, but you still want one. Yeah, I <laughs> understand. I understand the insanity. I probably wouldn't stand in line for six hours, but I'll ask a friend if they're going to go down to Disney and hey, could you okay. if you're going to get one for yourself, could you get one for me? <laughs> OK, I am seeing a sold item on eBay. I was just going to say eBay. <laughs> 90, 90 bucks. Yep, that's about and it costs, I think, 15 in the parks. Like that's, it's the, you get the bucket yeah. and then you get the, huh? Does it have popcorn in it? Yeah. It has popcorn. Oh. Yes. You get one, you get one popcorn fill with that. Oh, okay. And then you get, and then like other refills, like $2 or something like that. So it's, it's, oh, well, okay. it's a, well, if you're going to be in the, if you're going to be in 
Disney for multiple days and you like popcorn, it's something it makes sense to get the bucket because you get the you get the bucket and you get the refills, you know, as a snack yeah. that you can carry with you and just go as you yeah. go. But the also the other thing is you have to buy the bucket early in the day because they sell out so quickly. Yep. Yep. It was the same thing with the Halloween party one when we were down there too. Those that one went so. So see, I would have I would have gone to Disney World, which I planned at at the end of Infocom, but unfortunately, we weren't going anymore. So yeah, I lost out on on um, visiting Disney World. My big well, I really wanted to go to Epcot. Man, yeah. yeah, it's it they they're well actually by the time it comes back, if you try to time it with next time infocom is back they may actually be done with a bunch of the res ren renovations so that actually might be the better time to go nancy so because yeah. right now the whole center the whole center section is barricaded off so okay yeah yeah so, we'll see um but uh so yeah i had to bring up that i had to bet that i was like we, we had shared it on the uh, slack channel i was like all right let me bring let me bring this up and uh, let's talk about this real quick because it's, it's also relevant right now um now yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, now we know. And uh, so. Um, okay, so yeah, get somebody to make a popcorn bucket for the next show. Uh, oh, we need a. a there event. we go. Yeah, we need info, a VIX that we need a VIX uh, yeah. popcorn bucket. They do the popcorn, and then you can like get a different kind of popcorn bucket. <laughs> but a VIX that will you. actually <laughs> supply the popcorn. Yeah. There, oh, there you go. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. I want I want blue I want blue colored popcorn from like uh Crestron and, oh. or like you know or yeah. oh yeah that's like, what they you know what no no a vixen needs cheddar the cheddar cheese popcorn because it's got that orange color on it mm. which is almost a vixa okay. orange yeah so yeah you that's how you, then that's how you know where you've been oh, you know Joey 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 yeah Joey yeah we gotta tell you, we gotta talk to Joey about that and yeah. move and move it to October again I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep pressing her on that until <laughs> until she like cancels me somehow I don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness she won't speak to me ever at an infocom again that's probably what's gonna end up happening it's okay. like I'm just not talking to you Tim I was like, okay <laughs> anyway all right well Thank you all for listening tonight. Uh, you know, I hope we we wish the best to Renee. Hopefully, we we'll hope for some negative test results there. Um, and uh, and thank you to uh, Nancy and to Murphy. Thank you for yeah. joining us, Nancy. Nancy, great to have you back uh, after yeah. a couple of weeks uh, hiatus. And Murphy, you you got a good streak going here. You know, yeah. <laughs> here. We're glad glad to have you, and we're glad to have all you as our listeners. And until our next adventure. <laughs>